Now, this is kind of a straight jacket theory, but there's this theory going around that Gita could be the third legendary Pokemon of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But before we get into that, there's a different theory to talk about when getting into this. And this one is the idea that the third legendary is not something that's hiding underneath Area Zero or that room that the time machine is in, but the entire crater is the disc pokemon is the third legendary that the entire crater is this giant pokemon that's stuck in area zero this leads into some cool ideas because maybe when you go into area zero that fog you enter the moment you enter that fog everything is just an illusion think about it if you go on the map of scarlet and violet it does not show you area zero it always shows it as lines as if they can't display what's there the same lines they use for the Kalos part of the map they can't display what's there and there's also this fog when you're looking at it from above unless you go into area zero you can't see what's in there you can't take like binoculars and look down so maybe when you go into area zero it's an illusion it would be something like the third legendary can show you any illusion at once once you enter area zero but there's some guidelines here you can call a taxi in area zero and the man will come and pick you up and it's a weird point that game freak did not have to mention but they mention it during the story of area zero when you're with arvin namona and penny arvin says when he got attacked back there with his mobile stuff a couple years ago that he called a taxi this shows us that even if there are illusions going on that it's an actual crater you can go down and see the same things as other people in there anyhow those theories were just food for thought because the notion for gita being the disc pokemon comes from this idea that the disc pokemon Pokemon is stuck in area zero and it, Gita is its avatar trying to accomplish something but it's kind of an unfounded theory because there are only very very few hints of this in the game and so far these hints can be written off as just normal things but I think it's a fun idea and it's kind of interesting because the other day Ku put this riddle I don't know I guess, I guess he's saying there is a DLC in this game but he in the riddle asks what will the DLC focus on and you have the answer like Heath and another professor but Gita is there as well and when we think of characters that are pretty underused in Scarlet and Violet Gita is the most important one the main thing with this theory has to do with Gita's signature Pokemon which is Glamora Glamora is an interesting Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet here's his Pokedex entries Glamora's petals are made of crystallized poison energy it has recently become evident that these petals resemble Terra Jewels when you go into area zero for the first time they give you some cutscene encounters three of them in total two of them are paradox pokemon but the other one is glamora for some reason they specifically make us encounter a glamora and have namona mention hey look that's gita's pokemon scarlet and violet have on many occasions teased things earlier in the game that play out later that means something and this entire thing that happens in area zero is kind of pointless for us to encounter a cutscene glamora have to fight it with namona and her mention it's gita's pokemon it's almost like the game is trying to tell us a hint through Nimona and our interaction with that. Glamour is a very interesting Pokemon. As you can see here, it latches to the walls, but even in its normal stance and in the official Sugimori artwork that recently came out, it's always shown closed like this. And those petals when closed form a hexagon, just like the whole gimmick around this game and surrounding Area Zero. Based off its entry, it's feeding on that terrestrial energy, which give one of two answers. One, it's a normal flower Pokemon that evolved into this by relying on the disc Pokemon's energy, or it's almost like fragments of the disc Pokemon's power. And if you ask around, some people have theories that maybe the disc Pokemon is like this giant paradox Glamora that's more fully evolved like the complete version of a giant glamora and then other people like when you look at this right here related to az's weapon which is a whole different theory his name is az area zero az the ultimate weapon shines like a crystal for some reason and here we have glamora which when latched down looks just like a blooming flower like az's weapon but we won't get into that but there is this idea going around that there's something with glamora there's a move in this game called terra blast which when we first heard about terra blast in the rumors we thought of it as just a meta move that would serve only for tournament purposes not be anything deep but when the game came around it actually becomes an important move used in Area Zero for us to beat the other Crydon slash Maridon. Terra Blast being able to tap into your Terra type is almost an attack that derives directly from the third disc legendary Pokemon. It's a move that uses a small fragment of its power and there is only one Pokemon 
whose droppings can be crafted into Terra Blast, and it's Glamora. Glamora isn't just a normal Pokemon on Gita's team like her Go Goat or King Gambit, it's her signature Pokemon, and in fact, her appearance reflects Glamora. She has that same purple theme in the way she dresses. Have you ever seen Gita's official artwork? This girl looks creepy. So Nimona's interaction with that Glamour in Area Zero, right? What is it trying to tell us? I think one of the most likely things it could tease is that Gita has been to Area Zero. Now, if we're following this theory that she's actually the disc Pokemon, what are we trying to say here? That she emerged from Area Zero a number of years ago and then rose to being a trainer and becoming the champion of the region? I guess let's just roll with that for a bit. Let's see how the characters interact with Gita in this game. If you ask around, the more you play the game, you start to find characters that do not like Gita. For example, Larry. Larry hates Gita. All these characters on my face right now, Caddy, Rhyme, Grusha, Tulip, Larry, they all don't like Gita. Instead of this just being realistic, another side of it is that she could turn out to be evil in the DLC. And so I want to paint a picture, right? I remember thinking this when I replayed the game, but... Gita, that glove she wears, at first I thought wearing this glove meant you're a champion, but no, it means you're League staff. You're wearing her glove as a member of the League. If there is a true evil villain in this game, if Gita in the DLC ordered the League to do something or fight against something, and if they didn't know it was bad, she could turn the Elite Four hired by her into her evil team. The Elite Four, who had just stationary roles in the main game, would be the commanders of her operation. They wouldn't know she's evil. For example, let's say in the DLC, Gita got what she needed from the surface, and she's returning to Area Zero, and when we're trying to stop her, she tells the League to get in our way. That's hundreds of League staff members, and the four Elite Four members that would be, be there guarding different parts of Area Zero, fighting you. It would turn the protection that that League symbol looked like all this time when all the League staff are wearing it. All those black suit people wearing the, the League symbol. It turns from a League symbol of protection to the opposite. A powerful enemy force. Imagine that. They gave a symbol for us too. It's the perfect opportunity to turn that symbol into an evil symbol in the DLC. Not that the Pokemon League is bad, but that Gita is running Paldia right now. She's the top champion in the chairwoman. She rules Galar and she micromanages everything, which is another interesting detail the game throws at us. For all their time ruling at Paldia's top, she's always held this tight grasp on the region, like she's keeping watch on every Thing. Unlike other champions in other regions, she's personally involved with stuff. She's annoying all the gym leaders with these inspections. She's too watchful. Larry literally says she strong armed the Elite Four into joining, which is a crazy word. Strong arm means they were like threatened, forced into this position. He got the glove! Did he always have the glove? If we think about her actually being evil, all these small points lead up to her being a pretty good villain that was hiding in plain sight. And as long as the Elite Four don't realize she's evil, they'll fight for her. They're on her payroll after all. And being an Elite Four is like a serious government-like job. So they will follow Gita if she says to do something. And so long as they don't think she's up to something bad. She can command the entire league in this region on you if you got in her way and so why why game freak has to take that opportunity in the dlc see the door back there who there our fearless commander uh gita's role in scarlet violet is very minimal if you asked everyone that played this game most of them would say that gita was underwhelming to them but i don't even think that that was an accident by Game Freak's part. You had to have done that intentionally, especially when you made Glamora her last Pokemon. They intentionally screwed her team up. She sends out King Gambit early, even though that should be the last Pokemon you use because of its ability. And then we get to the way Gita is drawn when we look at her artwork. This is Gita's official artwork and I've never seen something more creepy. <laughs> Yo, the suit as well. Why are you wearing a suit? It's like you're trying to hide in plain sight. I'm kidding. But look at this suit, you know? So first off, she got this purple theme going on. She got weird spikes on her suit. The highlights in her hair look otherworldly. The first thing so many people thought when they saw Gita, especially this artwork here, is Lusa Mini Hilego. And it's just a coincidence, but Nihilego is also rock poison like Glamora. I'm not drawing a connection there. I'm just saying. She don't look like... She looks like there's something wrong with her. She looks like she's evil. She looks like she's half Pokemon. At first, the puffy hair 
with and going in all different directions just look like a stylistic choice by game freak but it almost looks like a stylistic choice to show that something's wrong with you look at her look deep into her eyes we don't have enough hints about this but we do have freaking dlcs come in that have to continue the story of scarlet and violet and we have this underused character here and then you have what i just said which is that that glove she wears can turn into the evil team of this game because she's commanding it and of course they'll listen to her they made it kind of iffy because we beat her in some school tournament i don't think that was her going at full I don't think we just took the top champion title from her. Notice they also don't let us rematch the Elite Four to confirm, but I'm pretty sure she was just messing around with the weaker team when she came to that tournament. No one in the game, correct me if I'm wrong, calls you top champion. She's probably still the top, top, <laughs> top champion. Look at that face. My favorite part of this is the fact that she could command the whole Pokemon League. I ain't never seen anyone talk about that. But with how underused the Pokemon League is, I feel like it'd be perfect if they would be getting in your way in the dlc so let's find a middle ground here right instead of her being the disc pokemon's avatar what if we say that she's the host of the disc pokemon you see that look she has the flowing hair imagine it's more of a stylistic choice to show she's possessed and hosted under the influence of something and at the end of the dlc once you save her maybe her hair turns all smooth again get rid of all these extra flops essentially what the dlc would have to do is tell us the backstory to gita where she came from and how she has glamora regardless of all the fun stuff for speculating there's one thing that seems pretty certain in this game which is that the third legendary can kind of host into people so we have heat heat went into area zero and the deeper he went once he got separated from his team he got completely overtaken by the third legendary he talked to the third legendary he heard a voice and it influenced him into writing all these equations and you would imagine the research team getting him is what snapped him out of it fast forward there's only one other character we know that fell under the disc pokemon's influence and that's sada and toro it's not explicitly said in the games but i'm certain they saw the same visions and were being influenced by the third legendary in the same way which is why they sound so crazy let's start from the the basics the crystals have influence on people she says when you get closer and deeper in area zero their influence is stronger and makes stuff more unstable. Heat was in Area Zero for a short period of time. Sada was down there for a long time. The AI Sada is the exact same as Sada. It has her memories, it has her knowledge. So how come when the AI is in the elevator with you, she says things like, I cannot understand why Sada would think like this, would do this even though she should understand because you have the exact same mind as her. She says something on the, along the lines of, despite me being this advanced AI, even I cannot understand it. There is a focus here. Eventually, they will break free of this walled garden known as Area Zero and run rampant across the Polydia region. I may have been created as a copy of the professor, and yet I cannot seem to find the logic in allowing such a tragedy to occur. The reason she can't understand sada's thoughts which should be her own thoughts is because those aren't sada's thoughts those are the third legendary's thoughts the disc pokemon baited her so now to talk about one more character that maybe is influenced which is gita we don't have anything to work with for gita's backstory what if gita was a perfectly normal human that innocently went into area zero and something about her was the perfect host for the disc pokemon that it influenced her or alternatively what if she's a person not even from our time period that emerged from area zero once sada started working on that machine maybe something that was sealed down there with the disc pokemon and once enough of the machine was rebuilt she was freed and so she went to the surface waiting for the rest of it to be free maybe the gita we see here is a lot older than normal humans are supposed to be and she's she was just trapped in area zero until recently what if her voice is the voice that heath heard trying to get him to rebuild the machine to free her from whatever prison they were in down there what if she's from even way further back what if she is one of the Paldian emperors or empresses back then what if she's this super ancient Paldian person all the way from the original times that those ancient people left those slabs and she got uh, trapped in there all these years and so you know she climbs to the surface rises to the strongest position possible and waits until someone releases the disc pokemon maybe her and the disc pokemon are like kindred spirits or partners pokemon and human 
from way back then i'm telling you these are straight jacket ideas so not to take them seriously but it does hype it up in a fun way especially when we know there are dlcs in this game there's some sort of story they're gonna tell us and everything i said about the my favorite thing is the freaking elite force sim the the pokemon league symbol imagine she is someone who's much older than what she looks she's from a whole different era and she just emerged from the crater and now she has the whole pokemon league staff on her team to command on you while she goes and frees her disc pokemon the purple theme some would say she has this glimora theme because she's closer to the third legendary than we think and you know this it's just more straight jacket thoughts but imagine she is very old and she knew like az back then you know damn that'd be crazy <laughs> what if she what if she ruled paldia beyond the current known history which only goes back 2000 years what if she was around during az's time what if she's the one who fought az imagine if she'd been wandering too or she hasn't been wandering but she was trapped in there for 3000 years and now she freed go get a drink with az sucker will stab you all right we just having fun here go on and shank that like button that's the theory we still got like about a week before january 8th which could be the time the dlc is announced and whatever that trailer is it will give us enough hints to make some really cool conclusions and see if some of the stuff we talked about in this video are true what do you think when you see gita do you think she's a perfectly normal person who's just a little micromanagey as champion or you get suspect vibes from her does this blank stare this uncaring expression that she gives throughout the entire game because nothing really matters you becoming champion all this stuff is the last thing on her mind she has bigger things she has planned essentially i'm asking are you wearing a tinfoil hat or not i'll put a poll on my twitter so you can click the link and vote whether you think Gita's a normal human or there's something to her let's see what the masses say i'll see you on the next video take care